Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we're going to review the ride of the Kingsong S20 prototype. So let me tell you more about it. Wrong way. Now, as this video is being uploaded, there is still a massive conflict in Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine, they're killing civilians, there's massive bombings, missiles. Um, yeah, it's really crazy. I don't want to get too much in depth into that. Check out other channels to stay informed, for example, Adam Something. And if you can, please donate or help Ukraine if you can go on protests. Uh, it's been hard recently for me to make regular uploads uh, because the situation is just tense. I've been also helping out here in Warsaw. So yeah, that's that. With that said, I still do have my YouTube job, although some would not say it's a real job, but it's my real job. So let's get into the ride of the King Song S20. With that said, big thanks to my e-wheel and King Song for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. If you want to get any wheel in Europe, feel free to use my coupon code WRONGWAY. If you want to get it anywhere else, feel free to check out the links below. With that said, I've already put around 300 kilometers um, on the clock on this wheel, uh, ridden it through various conditions. So this is sort of like a first, I don't know, second impressions of the wheel. I didn't yet do all of the performance testing, but now I have a pretty good idea what it's like to ride this wheel. It's not a review, wait for the review if you want to see more about quality and other concerns. But this video is more to say about what to expect in this wheel, in this, well, pre-production badge slash prototype badge of the King Song S20. So let's get into it. And you might notice that I don't have some parts of the wheel on the wheel. The boomerang is lacking because I needed to adjust the pads differently than what the King Song thought was right. I needed to push them more forward so my foot is also more forwards on the wheel because the wheel has a lot of weight in the back and having a pad in the usual place just puts me too far behind and it's too difficult to accelerate. I also um, put the front of the pedals lower than the back at minus 1.5 and all of this helps a lot to make this wheel a lot more zippy. Naturally it also can do stairs, but I don't advise to do that because you might break it. Just like here. But you might think that it was my error, but actually you can see that the wheel made a pedal dip and there was no beeping. Pedal dips usually notify you that you're overpowering the wheel and this is sort of like the last resort of the wheel not turning off by itself and trying to limit the rider. However, it is happening quite a bit here and you'll also see it later in the video. When going up slowly on those stairs, I also feel quite a bit of a lack of torque and there's sometimes some weird clonks in the motor that are a bit concerning. And also please keep in mind that I am stress testing the wheel. I am testing the limits of it so a heavier rider would know that this is either something that has a lot of headroom or not. And usually you shouldn't do those things with a wheel, but I'm doing that so you don't have to face some problems, probably with your face on the ground. With that said, there is still quite a bit of torque on the wheel. Uh, doing 25 degree inclines, 30 degree inclines isn't such a big problem when it comes to concrete or asphalt inclines. I also passed the 40 degree incline test that will come with the review. And yeah, the suspension works really well when going downstairs. Going upstairs is also really effective. However, at the second round of stairs, again, a nasty pedal dip stopped me. And here with the Commander HT, I had no problems whatsoever. With the right amount of speed before doing the stairs, it's actually quite easy to climb them. It almost feels like going up a hill. Going downstairs is always easier on a suspension wheel, however it will decrease the longevity of um, this product. However, when I tried to go upstairs again, 
there was a nasty pedal dip that threw me off again. This is really something that happens quite a bit on this wheel and I have concerns therefore to make a real full power acceleration test. With that said, here in the park you can see now the features of the tire. And this tire is a Gilwear tire, we didn't see it on any EUC yet. And it is really weird. The problem is with the S20 and this tire that you need to tilt the EUC a lot to make a turn and sometimes it's just really difficult to make a tight turn without scraping the pedals and even though the pedals are high um, yeah the turning radius is still really huge I would really like to see a Kenda 262 here instead of this tire because well I think it's just not the proper choice for it for like casual riders day-to-day -day riders it's actually quite comfy and um, it doesn't have that much tra train tracking, but it's, it just can't handle tight curves, which is, I mean, I think something essential to electric unicycles. It does also have a thick and hard compound. That's what she said. Um, so going up a curb or stairs shouldn't be a, a problem, especially also with a, I think, stronger rim of the S20. After a bit of riding, I got used to this tire, but it's also a bit weird when riding straight. Um, you, the EUC almost always tilts a bit and you need to correct it a lot. I think it's also partially fault of the thread. Uh, with that said, let's move on to the suspension. Here we are in a part of Old Town, Cobblestone, and I gotta say that the suspension doesn't feel like it's working really well. It's, it almost seems like the first badge of the S18. Now I don't know if it's fault of the spring of this or, or, or the system or some sort of bearings in the whole mechanism, but I don't feel the suspension working altogether that, that, that much. Uh, it definitely soaks up the bigger bumps, some big drops, and off-road, which you're gonna see later, it um, performs quite well, but it's nowhere near the um, S18, which has a really well adjusted suspension. And even the V11, which I tried back to back with the S20, is a lot, a lot more comfortable than um, the S20. Now, the stiffness of the suspension also makes the ride a bit more like uh, sporty, but if you want to have something really comfortable coming from a V11, this will be less comfortable, at least for what it is now. With bigger bumps as here, yes, it does work, but you can see you by yourself also in the footage before, uh, yeah, it, it the suspension mechanism doesn't work so well or so much. Uh, here you can also see me riding seated, um, the seat is a bit short, you can't sit on, sit on the back of it, but it is actually quite good. It's uh, a seat that I like to keep on the wheel, it's not too tall, it's quite comfortable and I still keep using it on the S20. Now we can see the train tracking test or tram tracking. There is a small bit of it, probably also because my pressure is high here at 41 psi, but that was the pressure for me where the wheel started turning a bit more. With lower pressure I felt like it didn't turn that much. Um, so yeah, that's that. And now you will be also able to see um, if this wheel has any pedal dipping in turns and I'm happy to report that as usual King Song doesn't have any pedal dipping in turns. I did feel a little bit of pedal dipping on successive bumps, maybe I'll be able to show that later, but nothing too crucial. But here you can see the tire and the turning on the, of the EUC. It's not a sharp turn, but the pedals are so close. And the problem is that even if I'm leaning more, the wheel is not turning more. It sort of goes up to a point and then it can't do anything more. I was really surprised of the pretty mediocre turning performance of this wheel. Especially making a U-turn, making some sharper turns at lower speed. Um, doesn't feel so right. At higher speeds and bigger turns you get some feedback but especially like in the city if you do need to do a lot of sharp turns like look at it I'm I'm leaning a lot more but the wheel just doesn't provide that much feedback it doesn't 
make the turn tighter. So I guess that's one of my concerns or things that I don't like about this tire and the performance here of the Kingsong S20. Now onto the suspension again. Um, here we have a part where I usually test the pedal dipping on successive bumps and here uh, the suspension just works really well. I wouldn't be able to keep those speeds at all uh, on a wheel without suspension. Uh, it doesn't seem like it has a lot of travel on those bumps, but you can definitely feel it. It's not as comfortable as the V11 or S18, but it works really well. And if you hit a pothole or if you hit a route on your way to work, you better be on an S20 instead of on a non-suspension wheel. Here, going through the park seated wouldn't be possible on a non-suspension wheel. And again, also with the pad setup, it's actually pretty comfy to ride anytime on the Kingsong S20. Speaking of pads, I had to put Velcro on them and also on the shell of the wheel because the double-sided tape, that's just a one-time thing and you can adjust your pads properly. However, after a bit of adjustment, I don't mind those pads so much. They're definitely not my favorite, but they do work. So yeah, I guess they're usable on this wheel. First, I thought that they were just, would just hurt too much, but yeah, I guess for something that comes with the wheel, this is for now the best you can get on the market that is included. Now we move on to off-road, the music stopped, and I wanted to show you a bit of the performance of this wheel off-road. And yeah, um, yeah, not the best. Let me let me let me show you why. First of all, the problem with the tire and the turning radius and tilting of the wheel becomes even more apparent. But when climbing, the wheel just starts bouncing up and down when it's facing this way later you'll see it facing the wrong way and it just doesn't have enough torque to go up a hill which I went up on a V11 and on a extreme ball commander when it was snowing uh, it just seems to me that there is not enough torque on this wheel it just tilts forward and it doesn't want to go now maybe it's a problem also with a bit of a loose sand um, I'll probably return to this uh, hill with the V11 again just to like prove that this is the case but yeah, the climbing performance was just really not what I was expecting. And while the wheel can do it on like hard surfaces, here on a bit of loose sand or loose soil, it just bounces up and down and then it gets overpowered. Well, that was really not something that I was expecting. Now moving on to a bit of a off-road trail, like a MTB trail. Um, the su suspension works pretty well in those cases and somehow if you don't lean too much the pedals won't clip and definitely the suspension helps out a lot with like drops, with roots and other obstacles. However, this wheel doesn't feel for sure like a HT wheel. It feels like you need a lot more leverage, more lean to achieve the same thing like on the RSHT or the Commander High Torque. It doesn't feel zippy, it feels like um, it needs just more force, leverage to get going. And even the 16X, the 16X is so much fun off-road. I just, for like technical, hard or harder, off-road trails, I I just couldn't like um, get the fun out of it. Then again, I'm you know pretty um, maybe not typical of, of a rider. I just like super steep inclines and like technical tight turns and so on. Probably for faster riding, it's amazing because of the suspension, um, and, and it's definitely more powerful than the S18. But yeah, I just I just couldn't get like that much fun with it especially at low speed at high speed yes the suspension works more and and better but yeah and maybe part of the problem here and this is also part of the problem when riding on the street uh, is the huge amount of weight in the back this wheel doesn't have a 50 50 weight distribution it just falls back if it's off 
and you can sort of feel that um, it's not that easy to steer either off-road and also on the street. It's not like it has wobbles or something, it just feels like if you do something it gets exaggerated or like the tail just forces the wheel to go one or the other way. Um, yeah, I just didn't really like the weight distribution here and I feel like it also makes accelerating more difficult. Braking is super good and easy, but accelerating, going up hills and also part of the problem with the suspension and the bouncing is also from the amount of weight in the back. Uh, when I later flipped the wheel over, it felt better. So yeah, let's just enjoy a bit more of off-road riding and then we'll flip the wheel. But really quick also, just going to the usual trails, if there is no steep inclines, if everything is pretty mellow, it feels pretty good there and the suspension helps a lot. Now we have flipped the Kingsong S20 and I gotta tell you, it feels so much more alive now. Um, the weight is now more in the front and perhaps you have known it from the Bigod EXN, uh, people were riding it backwards. Here it also works surprisingly well. It's way easier to do inclines with it, it feels more stable. Uh, I think you can also see it by my moves, I feel more sort of connected with the wheel, I feel more secured, um, I can sort of direct the wheel better. Uh, it's not a huge difference in braking, I think braking is still really good on the wheel and in general braking on the Kingsong S20 feels really good, I think also better than on the V12, but just the inclines and the amount of stability, the amount of control on, on over the wheel just feels a lot better. Now I tried to do this incline again uh, with a bit of sand um, with this new suspension setup. It was better, but it's still overpowered and didn't have enough um, power slash grip um, to go up there, but it felt a lot better. You can sort of feel, see here when I tried to just accelerate, the wheel just tips over. I think that was the limit the Kingsong engineers put on the wheel. Uh, and here I tried to go up again, no chance. So yeah, in general that's the performance off-road, but here you can see me riding on some steeper trails again with the suspension unit in the front. Uh, it's kind of nice because then you can just look down and see the suspension working, it's wonders. And I think you can see in my riding that I just have more control on the wheel. I, I felt a lot better when riding, so I guess Kingsong just constructed the wheel the wrong way. Uh, they just put the lights in the wrong places. Um, yeah, the front lights should be tail lights, just like <laughs> the possibility was on the Kingsong 18XL. And yeah, I guess that's just something for us all to learn. Weight distribution is really important and it's better to have more weight in the front than in the back. So let's conclude it all. And yes, you saw me bashing the Kingsong S20 quite a bit in this video. But this is not to say that this is a bad wheel. On the contrary, it's actually quite good. And I think that for most people, for most, I don't know, casual riders from point A to B, that want to have a wheel with suspension that has more range than the V11 and the S18, this is actually not too bad. Uh, the thing is that there was a lot of hype on this wheel and I, we as riders have also certain levels of um, experience on other wheels and then we compare it to the newest wheel. And to compare the S20 to all of the other flagships on, on the market, it's just mediocre. It's um, You probably won't need all of the performance on day-to-day -day basis and you will be fine. 
um, even when writing <laughs> the, the right way and without having like all of the um, torque for inclines. But for heavier riders and more performance oriented riders, I would just think twice before getting the S20. So with that said, <laughs> if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.